Good morning and welcome to the Jet Experience. Today we're doing uh, another Tesla video. Uh, it's a little bit different than the ones we've done. We have to take a quick trip out to Bullhead, Arizona uh, to help move Ashley's grandma over to Riverside. She's been here for a while, but we gotta go get some stuff. And since we're on the uh, social distancing and restrictions, uh, we don't really want her out traveling. So we volunteered to run over there and grab some of her stuff. But in order to do that, we need both of our cars to fit uh, all the stuff we're gonna get. So we've got the Model 3 from the Disney World trip and the Model S from the Big Bear trip and they're both out of focus. But we're just gonna compare um, the routes they wanna give us or that Tesla wants to give us, how to get there, the superchargers, how long it says it's gonna take for each um, and kind of just compare that way a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and jump right on the road because uh, it's probably gonna take us about five or six hours to get there and join us on this experience. All right, so we're all loaded up in the S and uh, there they are getting ready in the three. I've got some travel companions with me the three chihuahuas and uh, they basically have the entire back of the car uh, for their relaxing so we already know we're not going to do the route that this wants us to do but see if I can get it there we go collapsed because it wants us to go uh, from SoCal up past Barstow um, all the way over to Baker exit uh continue on the 15 and exit um just before nevada and then take some back roads what we're uh, gonna do is stop in barstow to charge and then continue along the 40 um over to needles and charge fully charged up i've got 252 miles on 100 percent charge uh we already know uh what the three gets it's at 90 percent. so we're gonna hit the road and see what we have when we get to barstow so i went ahead and manually updated the gps and i put barstow supercharger in just to get accurate numbers and right now it says uh we'll get to barstow at 57 percent in the model s um and uh, I did forget to mention, so the Model S I have is a, it's a 2014 85. Uh, it's not a P or a D, uh, just rear wheel. So it says it's going to take us an hour 14 to get there. It's about 80 miles away. So I don't even have to worry about conserving energy if I don't want to, since we're going to stop at Needles after as well. I'm probably going to set it somewhere around like 72 miles an hour. Not slow, but it's not speeding uh, that much. Um, so we'll, we'll update as we go, especially as we're going up through the Cajon Pass, which is that really big climb from probably about a thousand foot elevation up to four to five thousand foot elevation. So we'll, we'll take a look and see what the stats look like uh, once we get past that. There's the pups in the back. They're sitting down enjoying their drive. Huh, puppies? Hi, puppies. All right, so we're just a couple miles away from the Barstow Supercharger. Been driving for hour 15. So right about what it said we were gonna uh, take to get there. We ended up behind the three. We're kind of chasing the three. I keep saying we. I'm the only one with the dogs in the S. I'm kind of chasing the three all the way to Barstow. Uh, all right, we're pulling up to the supercharger now. Um, it is the very beginning of April, so kind of for a timeline. Of course, we're, we're in the COVID-19 crisis right now. Um, so I'm going to limit my exposure outside. We are only doing this trip because we're generally um, able to avoid most interactions with anybody just superchargers and as i'm pulling up it looks like there's three cars here um that's it and we're gonna park as separated as we can the cdc did just make the announcements of everybody wearing masks in public um so have my own cloth mask i've got some some gloves as well 
Uh, the other consideration for the supercharger, of course, is these aren't uh, the uh, Generation 3 chargers. Uh, so, I'm going to try and space out so we can charge um, a little more rapidly because mine definitely will charge slower than the Model 3. So, let me recap real quick here. We got uh, 25 kilowatt hours since the last charge, uh, what we used, and uh, I got down to 299 watt hour per mile. Uh, so, we're going to plug in real quick and then get back on the road. I'm all plugged in. Uh, I, I threw in the Needles supercharger, so it wants me to charge for 10 minutes uh, to get to Needles with 3%. It's a little below my comfort level, so of course we're going to uh, charge a little longer than that. Uh, but let's run over to charging and see what we're running at. 39 kilowatts, 133 miles an hour. Okay, I've been charging about a half an hour or so says we're gonna get the it would be 30 minutes to continue full charging it says i uh, got 146 miles to needles two hours and 15 minutes and we'll get there with 23 percent and right now i'm at 209 miles so that gives me about a 60 mile buffer uh, range buffer uh, which i am comfortable with as we're talking over text right now we may have to spend a little more time at needles since we don't we don't have a, uh, a really big charger at our destination at the house we're going to, so we'll have to charge um, on a 30 amp. So in this area, not that any of it's open and available really, there's a Chili's, it's right in the uh, parking lot of an Ayers Hotel. It's not really focusing. In the distance, back on the other side of our Model 3 is a Dunkin' Donuts, which being a New Englander, I'm quite partial to. Unfortunately, they're closed right now. And then right on the other side of Dunkin' Donuts is an Arco AMPM. And the other thing I've been looking at um, for considering whether to continue this drive now or not is uh, being that I'm in aviation, I have uh, apps, uh, one particular for flight, which is what I use when I'm flying. Uh, it's coming in kind of some funky colors, but um, I dropped a direct two to needles. There's not a whole lot of airports um, along I-40 so the closest I can get is uh, Barstow Daggett. Tell me the winds there right now, 28018. So that, that's a pretty good tailwind. Uh, but the Needles Airport had it, it was like 130. So that's, that'll be a little bit of a headwind for us once we get there. Everything along, along uh, the route in between, it's hard to say because there's no, uh, there's no airports really. So we should have a tailwind at least a little bit of the way. So that should help with our range as well. So it's quite interesting. I wasn't totally sure how much of a tailwind we would have, but right now at 73 miles an hour, I'm getting 250 watt hours per mile. We've been uh, 30 minutes from Barstow now, which means this is a very, very efficient tailwind. And uh, we're just cruising along I-40 with nothing for the as far as the eye can see except desert and hills we are just a few miles from needles supercharger uh five miles to be exact six minutes to go uh, it says we're getting there at 26 percent uh 284 watt hours per mile uh just over two hours we've been driving and uh, 40.9 kilowatts i'm currently at 66 miles of range left so that's going to put me right about 60 ish miles of range when we get there which is about what it was when i left uh, when we left barstow so and here's a quick shot 277 watt hours per mile 41.4 kilowatts uh or kilowatt hours at 149.2 miles all plugged in at the needle supercharger uh this one is it's basically it's at a shell um, there's only four spots. There's two here and then two over on this side where the three's plugged in. Uh, right after I pulled in, another S pulled in and parked right next to us. Let's see what numbers I'm running. I'll pull up charging here. 55 minutes to, I guess, what would be charged, fully charged. Uh, got 128 miles, charging at 60 kilowatts right now, 202 miles an hour. So even with them plugged in next to me, it's actually charging quicker than we were at the other supercharger where we were all alone. So we made the decision to uh, go ahead and make this a shorter uh, stop. 
Uh, I've got 140 miles of range to go about 25 miles, obviously more than, more than enough to get there. It's just uh, straight up uh, Highway 95 here, all the way up to the Bullhead City area. Just parked in Bullhead uh, after a quick detour to get uh, dinner on the way. So let's see, time is 4.15. Uh, we left at 11, five hours and 15 minutes with our stops. They reset because I had to get out of the car to adjust the gate. Last little bit, 29 miles, 8.3 kilowatt hours and 283 watt hours per mile. So not too bad, of course, this last little bit was uh, uh, just a little jump. I didn't think to set a trip to get the whole thing together, uh, but perhaps I'll do one on the way home. All right, it's been a couple of days. We're all packed up, loaded up. Um, most everything is in the S. We've got a little bit in the three. Uh, so this is really gonna be a good comparison of empty weight on the way here versus all loaded up probably, uh, I don't know if I had to guess, maybe five or 600 pounds of stuff in the car. So we'll see what that's gonna do to the range and the, uh, the efficiency. So we're gonna get back on the road. We're leaving once again almost right around 11 o'clock. So we'll see if it takes any longer or quicker to get back. Um, and it is raining in Southern California right now, so we may have to go a little slower for that. Uh, so let's continue down the road. And once again, we're going to go a different route than this says. 250 miles to get home, says four and a half hours. It wants us to go via 29 Palms. Um, but this is all off-road drive or off-highway driving, not off-road driving. Uh, we've done this route before, um, but we're not going to do it this time. Um, we're mostly going to do a reverse route of how we got here, though we're talking uh, about uh, range right now. It's about 170 miles back to Barstow. We could go over to Baker. Baker it is, or at least since we're heading in that direction, what we can do is... Uh, see how it's looking as we near Baker and if we want to stop there for a few minutes we can do that or just push on to Barstow. So we're crossing the bridge from Bullhead over to Laughlin uh, where all the casinos are and I'm going to try and get a shot down uh, the main strip in Laughlin uh, to see what would probably otherwise be a pretty busy street. It is a Monday morning but it's it's quite deserted. parking lots are empty absolute ghost town and I can't imagine Las Vegas is is any better right now and to give an idea of what the car looks like with what we're hauling let's see if I can get a good shot it's a mixture of Tupperwares uh, or like large Tupperware totes there's some house plants back there large large potted plants uh, I've got stuff basically in every possible crevice of the car and then I even had to throw some uh, some paper towels up here since we're in this paper shortage so we're bringing back everything we can we're already down to now it says 10 percent getting to barstow let me flip it around 10 percent to barstow um so it's not looking good oh it just went up to 11 but we do have these mountains to go through so that that might wreak havoc havoc on the range right now and here's exactly what i'm talking about um we're three and a half miles into this, or I'm sorry, uh, five and a half miles into it. We're climbing up the little bit of the hill up into the hills here. And uh, I'm above 700 uh, watt hours per mile. Um, so it should taper back down as we get through these and start to go downhill a little bit. Uh, but I'll keep an eye on that. And now I'm starting to get alerts. It was uh, stay below 75 to reach destination. So the route that we're taking uh, to get to hopefully Barstow uh, brings us through Nipton, California. You can kind of see it in the distance just a little bit with some teepees kind of sticking up. I understand this might be a, a, a neat little like um, historic town. Um, There's quite a few uh, teepees over there. I'm not not totally sure what it is. Skyline Solar looks like they've got a solar plant. Uh, I don't know if that's a place where you can like stay the weekend or something in those. 
Here's a very aged car. It looks like just a very, very tiny little, almost like a village. <laughs> I don't even know if I can call it a town. Um, in between kind of the main roads of California and Nevada. We were in Nevada just for a very brief time. So there's a little bit more up close and personal uh, look of what uh, the Baker Station looks like. Most of them, um, if you come in from the back here, these are all pull forward spots. And then if you are in one of the most of these, you can just drive all the way through like this, kind of like I did, and then get to these ones instead of having to back in. There's just a couple that are like this, which is the one, the three pulled into where there's a pylon right in the middle of it. Uh, for the solar that's probably helping power these uh, so she'll have to back out and then over here you've got basically another 20 that look just like that it's all the same so they've got 40 full complete superchargers here uh, looks like eight of the non-tesla fast chargers over there and those even look like uh, they're almost styled like a traditional gas station uh, where they're like pull up to the pump plug in and then and then go uh, which is quite an interesting idea all right all charged up almost all the way to 90 percent where i had it set 151 miles to get back down to riverside it says i'll be getting there with 12 percent two and a half hours for 151 miles and i've got 214 miles of range uh, plus we have the cajon pass to go down so it, it should be plenty of range uh, the wind is kind of Headwind in some places, tailwind in others. I'll, I'll uh, keep it updated as we head down the hill. I'm back to 6% uh, estimated to get home. I've gotten a, uh, a couple alerts about staying below 75. I did slow back. I set the cruise to 70. And what I've got right now is I'm, I'm kind of drafting just a little bit off a Penske truck. It it's, may or may not be helping. It's not a very big truck. Um, all the semi trucks are going a little slower than I really want to go. The three has taken off a little bit, a little bit further ahead. I'm not really following them right now. So here's where we're at right now. Uh, I'm in Victorville, probably, I don't know, five miles or so from... Uh, the start of the Cajon Pass from the top of it. I've got 52 miles to go to get home uh, and I'm at 77 miles of range uh, with getting home at 14%. I'm not sure if that's accounting for the big downhill slope I have coming up or if it's just um, you know looking at it from a flat standpoint. My plan is to try and make it all the way home. It does look like the weather's worse down the hill, so I really don't want to have to get out of the car if I don't have to. I am generally confident knowing this particular car, this is my everyday driver, that I, I think we should be able to make it. And just for some quick reference, uh, this is what I'm actually looking at um, visibility wise. All right, I'm all parked in the garage now. Uh, so we'll get some stats real quick right now. Uh, ignore that top line. That was the two and a half miles I just drove from unloading the car. So down at the bottom, trip B, uh, 270 total miles um, with my little slight detour, uh, 89 and a half kilowatt hours and with an average of 331 watt hours per mile. Um, not, not bad at all. And then... Right now, there we are at 24 miles of range left to go. Um, not a whole lot of wiggle room to do anything else. So that was our mini road trip in the Model S and Model 3. Thank you very much for joining us on this experience.